Today is the uh, 14th Sunday after Pentecost, and um, it's also the anniversary of uh, Ken Bayliss. Eternal rest grant to him, O Lord, and that perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Father and Son, The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Brethren, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. That for these are contrary one to another. And so you do not the things that you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanness, immodesty, luxury, idolatry, witchcrafts, enmities, contentions, emulations, wraths, quarrels, dissensions, sex, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I foretell you, as I have foretold to you, that they who do such things shall not obtain the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, patience, benignity, goodness, longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, chastity. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified their flesh with the vices and concupiscences. Please stand for reading the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will sustain the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, be not solicitous for your life, what you shall eat, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body more than the raiment? Behold the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not of much more value than they? And which of you, by taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? And for raiment, why are you solicitous? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They labor not, neither do they spin. But I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed as one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more you, O ye of little faith? Be not solicitous, therefore, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the heathen seek. For your Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Seek ye therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Saint Augustine uh, uh, wrote a book. Uh, he says, Two loves made two cities. The love of God to uh, the annihilation of self made the city of God, and the love of self uh, made uh, the city of the earth, the earthly city. These two are, are separate. They're separate. They can't be united. Same as our Lord says, we can't serve uh, God and mammon. We cannot be uh, divided in our service of our Lord. We can't choose, say, yes, I want to serve also the world. I want to be a citizen of the city of God, but I also want to be a citizen of the city of, of the earth, the earthly city. And there's no uh, there's no dual citizenship. You can't have two passports. You're either, you're either in the city of God or you're in the earthly city. That's what our Lord's saying. We cannot be in both. We cannot say, I want to straddle uh, uh, the fence, and uh, I want to support both. And this is exactly the sin of the Council Fathers. Uh, they wanted to uh, open to the world. They said, we have to open to the world. The world's outside, we're inside, and the church always kept itself separated from the world, and said, no, we have to uh, not be part of the world. The world is the enemy. Uh, the world is out there, but the church, the council said, no, we have to open up to the world. We have to let the world into the church. Uh, we don't want them to be considered the exterior darkness anymore. 
We want to say that everyone has great dignity, whether they love God or hate God. Uh, they have great dignity, and we have to respect this dignity of man. And so we want to we want to serve man. We want to serve man. And what they did then? Well, they tried to serve two masters, and they could not. So they ended up serving man instead of serving God. They, so now they are uh, the church uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, they're no longer uh, the priest and the pope and the bishops are no longer men of God. Now they're men of the people, men of the people, men of the men, and they have to be there for the people rather than being there firstly uh, for God. And they, they manifested that at the mass by turning the priest around and having him face the people instead of having him face God, instead of having him face away from the people, face God, and uh, say, yes, I'm offering this sacrifice uh, to God, and, uh, and not offering it. Uh, to the people. They said, no, we're not going to have the sacrifice anymore. We don't need to do that. We don't need to honor God with our mass. We're just going to have a, have a community meal, assembly, a meal of the assembly, and come together uh, to celebrate the uh, memorial of the Last Supper. And that's how they changed the mass. They made it uh, for men instead of a, 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 a duty and justice to honor God and offer sacrifice to God. Sacrifices always been offered to God from the time of Abel. Uh, from the time of Abel, men have known they had to after, offer sacrifice to God. Even the pagans, they had false gods, but they knew they had to offer sacrifice to their gods. They, they got the wrong idea of God, but they said, no, we have to offer sacrifice uh, to uh, uh, these gods. And so this is something that's always been done in the church uh, and always been done. It was done by the Jews in the Old Testament when they were preparing for our Lord to come. And the church has continued that with the Mass that our Lord instituted to offer sacrifice to God, to give honor and glory to God, and to make up for the sins of men and for the sins of the people. So this is a, a, what our Lord says, we can't serve two, we can only serve one. If we serve, try to serve two, we're going to love one and hate the other. And we see that the conciliar church has come out and, and now and loves the world and has not much to care about God and God's commandments. And uh, our Lord says, if you love me, keep the commandments. And the Pope says, well, the commandments aren't too serious. We don't have to worry too much about the commandments. Uh, we don't have to worry about that because the Pope doesn't love God. He doesn't love God. He doesn't want to say, yes, we have to uh, show God we love him by keeping his commandments and uh, fulfilling his, his law. And so this is what happens. They come to love the world and love men rather than love uh, God. This is what happens to anybody who tries to serve two masters. And this is what Bishop Fillet is trying to do now. He wants to say, he wants to say, well, I want to be traditional. I want to, be, I want to maintain tradition. But I also want to serve the conciliar church. I want to love the conciliar church. I want to be a part of the conciliar church. And uh, I want to be both. And uh, you can't be both. You either have to be a part of the Catholic church and the traditional, or you have to uh, be uh, uh, in the uh, conciliar church and uh, an enemy of God. You can't be an enemy of God and a friend of God at the same time. And uh, so we have to decide. We have to say which camp we're in, where am I, where do I stand, who am I with, and uh, it, we have to say, I want to serve God. This is what all the saints do, and then we're motivated by the Holy Ghost. If we decide to serve the world, we decide to serve men, well then we're going to, we're, we're falling into the works of the flesh, because the flesh will rebel against us and say, well, uh, I'm, I'm, part of, I'm part of man, man, flesh is part of the man, and so we have to serve the flesh as well. And uh, we, we end up falling into other sins as well as the sin of not loving God because uh, we can't serve uh, the two masters. So if we try to serve the world, if we try to be with the conciliar church, we will end up hating God, hating the law of God, and not wanting to keep it. And this is what has happened to Pope Francis. He doesn't want the law of God. He, he hates the law of God. He says, no, we don't want that. We don't want those commandments. We want to rather... Uh, please men and uh, please the passions of men, please the, please the concupiscences of men. We want to please uh, the world. We want to be honored by the world. We want to uh, receive the worldly honors from worldly men. So we want to please rather the enemies of God rather than pleasing God. This is uh, the terrible crisis we're in. 
uh, that they've chosen the wrong master and uh, we have to say no we're not going to follow that master we're going to follow the true master which is our lord jesus christ and uh, the true god which is the holy trinity and we're going to worship the holy trinity and we're going to uh, uh, give great honor and glory to our lord we're going to give uh, our lord jesus christ the honor and glory we're going to give them the sacrifice of the mass and we're going to try to please them and we're going to honor the ten commandments and say yes we show we love god by keeping his commandments and so we have, we have to love god with our whole hearts and we have to say well i love god but maybe i could love him more I, I need to try to love him more and have greater confidence and faith in him this is what uh, our, our lord indicates also in the mass today uh, that uh, he wants us to have confidence in him and trust in him and not trust in the world not say well i got to get these things from the world I, I need this and this and this and so therefore i have to please the world that the world will give me these things uh, rather he says please god and uh, your father in heaven will make sure that you do get these things so let's try to always put god in the first place uh, every day not only every day in the beginning of our day we offer our day to god and then uh, we try to give him all we can uh, and uh, we realize that we have to serve him first and we have to serve him most and we have to love him above all things uh, with our whole heart and we cannot uh, compromise we cannot divide ourselves we cannot divide our loyalties in any way we are either with god or we are with the enemy so we can't serve both we will love we, that's what our lesson other thing our lord's saying if you serve the world well you're going to be my enemy you're going to be with them and you'll be an enemy of mine and this is if we go with the conciliar church we're going to be enemies of jesus and we'll be enemies of god and this is what the society of saint Pius the tenth is doing and they're becoming enemies of god enemies of jesus because they're becoming friendly with the conciliar church and they said we want to go the way of conciliarism and uh, therefore they cannot go the way of tradition because you cannot do both uh, you can only go one way or the other way we are not uh, divided we cannot be in both camps and we cannot uh, please everybody so we have to say yes we please first uh, god and we trust that god who is our father will indeed provide for us and take care for us and let's ask our lady uh, as a true mother uh, to admonish us if we start going the wrong way and to uh, keep us on the on the path to serving God the Father and the Father and the Son.